I'm out of breath. And then, then he goes, he gives me this rod. It's about that big. <laughs> and he gives me a depth finder. He's like, go. And we basically, we were following that contour break, and we were popping holes until we found the fish. And, and again, I'm like, this is what I do with bass fishing. The bass fishing, I go down these breaks, and I'm fishing a crankbait. I'm making all these casts until I find the fish. And now we're doing it with the rod that big. Go to a hole, turn the depth finder on, drop a little ice jig down, jig it, watching it, watch the jig fall, nothing, go to the next hole, go to the next hole. Finally, I got about six holes down, and I dropped the ice jig down, I jigged it, and all of a sudden I saw a line coming off the depth finder. And I go, oh! And I shook it a little more, I got a bite! I got a bite! Oh my God, I got one! And I pulled it out, and I was so excited, my heart was beating. I was like, oh my God! It was like, I felt like I was winning the classic. Unbelievable! I pulled it out of the hole, and it was a yellow perch about that big. <laughs> I've never been more excited about a fish that was like four inches long in my life. It's the first fish I ever caught through the ice. But it, it was an awesome trip because it really did open up my eyes to how similar fishing is. Ice fishing for yellow perch is the same as bass fishing. It's the same as red fish. Fish related to change, fish related to the contour break using your electronics, presenting the bait. It's all the same. That's why I love fishing. Love it all. Love it all. It's a good question. Any more? Favorite episode of St. Lemons? Any more? Yes, sir. Say it again. New York City. Anybody from New York City? Raise your hand. All right. New York City was an awesome show because it was actually a two-part show. It was a two-part show. And we actually freshwater fished for bass. Central Park, and then we did some striper and blue fishing out on the river. And it was unbelievable. It, it was our second show we ever shot. And it really made me excited about the fact that you can fish anywhere you want. And that's that's what I loved about City Limits, is that it's crazy the places we call fish. It's unbelievable. And you know, you can take uh, a city kid that knows nothing about the outdoors, and you can introduce them to the sport, no matter where you're at. So, Central Park, anybody ever fish in Central Park? It's unbelievable, isn't it? And even in the fountain. And he said, even in the fountain. It's unbelievable. <laughs> and it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big secret. I mean, it's a great kept secret. It's a world-class fishery. We caught a lot of bass. And then we went out, and we did some saltwater fishing, and we fished for stripers and blues. And I don't do a whole lot of that, so I'm kind of inexperienced. I show up and I've got my bass tackle, and I'm, you know, the guy said we're going to catch them on top waters, swim baits. Cool, I got that. I do that bass fishing, and I've got my rod, and I just tie it straight on 15 pound fluorocarbon. This nice chug bug, popper style bait. Throw it out there, we get around the jetty, popping and popping. All of a sudden, one just goes, go, <laughs> like, oh god! And I set the hook, and the line goes snap. Like, oh crap! <laughs> Reel back in. I'm gonna cut like three poppers. I'm tying another one. And, and my guy is looking at me. He's like, No, no, you got it. I'm like, No, I got it. I fish for a living. I know what I'm doing. Tie another popper back on there. Make sure my knot's right. Be off the line. No, no nicks. I'm good. Throw it back out there. Pop, pop, pop. I'm gonna get you this time. Whoa! Yeah, got him. Oh God! <laughs> Reel back in. Then this time it's kind of like. Look, Mike, he's like, there's a blue fish mixed in with your strikers. You're breaking off because they got to you. What do you mean by that? Let me see your rod. Well, he's got like an 80-pound leader on and all this. So finally, on the last popper, I figured it out. We ended up catching some giant blue fish, big stripers all mixed together. It's amazing the striper fishery on the East Coast and how good it's gotten in the last five or ten years. Unbelievable. What a phenomenal fish. But, uh, New York City. Anybody else? Anybody else? Favorite city with this episode? Anybody? Pittsburgh. Anybody from Pittsburgh? Anybody know about Three Rivers? Man, that place has got my number. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. There's three rivers there that all join in. We filmed the show there for City Limits the week after I fished a tournament there and I lost by three ounces. The tournament, first place in that tournament, was $500,000. I lost by 
three ounces. Three ounces! You got a Skittle on you? Can I borrow that Skittle so I can throw it down his throat? So, yeah, the difference was a $400,000 difference between first and second place. That hurt. So that was in my mind. A week later, I show back up in Pittsburgh to try to go pitch a limit in eight hours. So I had a kind of a little, little anger issue going into that event. And then I show up, and we've got these camera guys on the boat. And I've got, you know, I've got my four or five rods on the front deck of my boat. And I'm ready. I'm going to have revenge. Even though I, I lost the tournament, I'm going to have revenge on this week. So there's the camera guys, and they've never filmed in a bass boat before. And they're all like this. They're all filming me. And I'm like, get these guys off this front deck. So I go to grab a rod first thing. I go to throw it, snap, rod breaks. So I'm like, and I look at him like everyone's got a bent guy. I look at my camera guy and he's just smiling at me. <laughs> don't worry, I got back in a camera guy a little later in Memphis. So don't worry about that. He stepped on half my rods, half my rods are broken. Anyway, we finally ended up figuring out the pattern. We caught some fish. But talk about imitating forge. That's what sticks out in my mind in Pittsburgh. And so we talk about trout fishing. And in trout fishing, there's a golden rule of trout fishing, especially for fly anglers. And what is it? Match the hatch. Anybody ever hear that term in fly fishing? Match the hatch. That's the golden rule of fly fishing. But it should be the golden rule of all of fishing. Because the one thing I really learned in, in bass fishing especially is that the best way to catch them on artificials, on a fake lure, is to match what's what's normally there in their environment. Match what they're eating on. You know, match, match the food source, right? And that's what we had to do in Pittsburgh. So, and, and before I talk about it, how can we figure that out? There, there are ways we can figure it out, right? What's one way we can figure out what they're eating in a place? Look in your live boat. That's actually a good technique. If you're fishing, even if you're not going to keep them to eat, you catch one, throw it in your live well, let them swim around a little bit. A lot of times they'll regurgitate what they're feeding on. You look in your live well, you see a minnow floating in there. You see a shad, you see a bluegill. So look in your live well, what's another way? What can we do? We, we can do some at home before we ever get to the lake, right? Do some research. Anybody on the computer, raise your hand. <laughs> you raise your hand. Stand up here, come up here, real quick. Look, turn around, look at her. She raised her hand. She's got a computer that's awesome. Before you go to the place, you're fishing a new place you've never fished before. You're going to Hudson River, you've fished it for 30 years. Google search forage in the Hudson River. How many heads you think will come up? Eight bazillion. So you can figure out what the forage is. Here's some other techniques. When you catch, every time I catch one, I'll catch that fish, I'll bring it in. Your instinct is, man, you're pumped up, you're excited. Your instinct is when you land that fish, you want to hold it up to your buddy, and you want to smile, you know. <laughs> and then let it go, and then you start fishing again. Stop for a second, you catch that fish, look at his throat, I'm serious, it's gonna sound strange. You catch that fish, you grab that fish, you open his mouth, you look in there, look at his mouth. Hello, hello, hello. Look, look down at the fish's throat. A lot of times you'll see what he's eating sticking out of his throat, right? You see a tail? This is a true story. Last year, Bass Master Classic practice, I caught a big one in Venice, Louisiana. It was like seven pounds. Never caught a big one down there. I said to hook, I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, this is what I need to turn. This, this, this is the kind of fish I need. I look down his throat, there's a, I see a tail sticking out. I go, okay. I get my needle nose pliers. He ain't gonna miss it. He's a big one. I get it, I start pulling it out. That's common, it keeps coming, it keeps coming. I'm like, what the? I pulled it out, it was like a 13 inch large mouse in a seven pound large mouse throat. <laughs> Cannibalism. And I, and I just thought, that's, that's what cost me the $500,000 trip. Ah, be quiet. <laughs> I'm kidding, it still stinks though. It's relevant. <laughs> look at his throat, right? But even if you catch it, you look at his throat, you don't see nothing. Here's something else I want you to do. Don't think I'm strange. This is really what I want you to do. You get that fish and look at his throat, you don't see nothing in there. I want you to feel the fish's belly. Um, feel his belly. I'm serious. Feel his stomach, right? Because what can we do by feeling that fish's stomach? We can feel what's in there, right? 
and we feel that, that belly of that fish, and we feel it's like crunchy. What's that fish eating? Crayfish. He's eating crawfish, absolutely, right? We feel that belly and there's like an object, we're like turning it end on end. What is that? Sunfish, bluegill, marine, porridge, right? We feel that fish's gut, it's real soft. Soft grade porridge, right? Shad, or minnows, or gobies, right? Feel his belly, I mean, through those things. So, we want to know what the porridge is. So in Pittsburgh, one of the things that I, I recognized early on in Fishing that River is everything's small. A lot of the small mouth eat shad, but they have such harsh winters there that a big shad in Pittsburgh is like that big, right? That's like you look out in the water, you look at the shad, and they're all like that big. So that told me something right away. So, you know, I put down the Kevin Van Dam spinner baits, I put down the swim baits that are, look like a tennis shoe, and I went in my box and I looked for something that matched the size of those, those little forage fish. So, five minutes ago, so little grubs, little crankbaits, little white, matching the color, match the size, match the action. Think about the forage when you're picking a bait. One more. Anybody else have one more favorite state limits episode? Yes, sir. Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. Another awesome, amazing episode where current was super key. Now, when you think about the Potomac River, you think about lush grass beds and your flipping large mouth. And that's what we wanted to do. We got there and we did that for about an hour. It didn't work. We're like, God, let's, let's, just, let's run up river. Let's try to find something else. We're running up there. And we're going up, we're running up. All of a sudden, I look to the left, and I, and I see some water shooting out, and then all of a sudden, my slipper kicked in again. And I'm like, and there it was again, another poop pipe. And just like in Philly, we found an area that was shooting current out that attracted the bait, that attracted the smallmouth, you know? So in every one of these examples, you're hearing similar things, different species. Saltwater, trout, smallmouth, largemouth, but a fish is a fish, right? It's going to relate to current. He's going to be in the breaks of the current. He's going to be near areas where there's what? Food, right? Forage. Then once you get there and you find the fish and you find the food, what kind of bait are you picking? You're trying to do what? Match the hatch. It's all the same. So if you remember one thing about this weird seminar where I never talk about anything, think about constantly trying to analyze what's happening. As long as I'm doing this, the, the, the one thing I can tell you for sure is the longer that I fish, the more seminars I give, there's only one constant that I know. And that it's always changing. You can never know enough about the sport. Now when I look at guys that are successful anglers, girls that are successful anglers, they're thinking. That's the one thing that makes them good. Why do they catch fish all the time? Because they're always thinking. Yeah, they're always changing. It's all mental. Fishing's like a puzzle, right? Anybody, any 80s babies in here besides me? Anybody remember the Rubik's Cube? Anybody wear parachute pants? It's embarrassing, I know, I do too. Were they the ones that had the different colored zippers? They were like black, and the zipper was red, and then you unzip the red zipper, and then it'd be like yellow on the inside of that. It's crazy. No, don't worry, we'll be back in style. Give it a year or two. Uh, where was I going with that? No, the room's cute. <laughs> Mission's like a puzzle. I'm not kidding. Every time you're on the water, take all the information. Think about the forage. Think about the current. Think about everything. You catch a fish. Analyze the fish. Why did he hit there? Every time you get a bite, every time you catch a fish, it's a piece of that puzzle. It's that Rubik's Cube. <coughs> and you solve a side. You solve another side. And when you have that dream day, where you catch a bazillion fish and you figure out the pattern and everything you do is right. You can't make a bad cast, you know those days? I have them once in a while. You've solved that puzzle and it's perfect. That's fishing. All right, before I'm done, I'd like to do one, one last thing. Pull back up here.